Hello everyone, Flying Dutchie here and welcome to Heart of Iron 4. It has been a long time that I played this game and I am very happy to return because it is a good game. Sometimes there were some bugs but uh, most of the time you have a lot of fun playing this game. We are uh, still in the Collie version 1.10. I think this is the, the patch you will get um, tomorrow. I think tomorrow the patch will release and also the immersion pack. The battle for the Bosporus, so that's what we are going to play. Uh, I did a test game, so I know a little bit what I need to do. We will of course start in uh, the first date possible, 1st of January 1936. And we are going to play as uh, Greece, as you can see in the title. I hope you know what Byzantium means. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's what we are going to try to do. We are going to try to form uh, Byzantium. And we will try to, well, do things Byzantium did. So uh, let's uh, jump into the game. If you want to read this, just pause the game. We will start as Constantinus de Mertis, but uh, we will change this uh, very soon in the game. And uh, yeah, let's just jump into the game here and uh, see the new focus tree. Uh, I will play RMN mode. I will turn off historical AI focuses, I think. So it's going to be a bit of a gamble. But hey, if we fail, we can try again, right? So let's just do uh, non-historical AI focuses. And I think we can start. Let's uh, make a save file. Let's say uh, Byzantium. There we go. So in the new patch, Bulgaria, uh, Greece and Turkey have new focus trees. Also Romania and Yugoslavia have uh, their trees uh, revised, I think. Not sure, actually. But I, don't, I did not check those trees out yet. Uh, let me see the... Let's do this a bit lower. And let's also turn on these radio stations. Yeah, let's do these ones. Because there are some new sounds as well. So, the starting situation of Greece, we are uh, very poor. We are... Very poor. And we have to change this. Now, we start with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 regiments. Uh, we have a couple of army leaders. We have uh, Kalambos Castrimodros or something like that. Marcus Dracos, Alexandros Papagos. And we will just pick one of them. I guess the one with the highest defense skill. Uh, this will change later on as well, because we are going to change some things at the start. We have one field marshal, so let's, let's give it to the field marshal. And for now, just do some defense, I guess. Especially on these islands. And you can stop doing the whole coastline. Just do something like that. Now, first things first. Oh, and this is a new song, by the way. Uh, Greece doesn't start with the good ammunition. And you can see the difference between the uh, standard one and the upgraded one. Double soft attack. So we have to start with that one, I think. And then we will start uh, doing the normal stuff. Like production, construction speed, and that kind of things. Uh, we have three civilian factories. Now, here you can see how poor we are. Two. And why is that? Consumer goods is at the moment 60% of our of all our civilian factories. And that is because we have civilian economy. We have a debt that we have to repay to the IFC. We have a foreign monopolies uh, mod modifier. And we also have the Schachtplan. Which is good and bad at the same time with Germany. And I think that's was from the First World War. So... Uh, yeah, we need to uh, get rid of all these modifiers as quickly as we can. But uh, maybe we should start building uh, one military factory. Because... At the moment we only have two. That is how weak we are. We don't have three... Uh, military factories, so we need to get our economy up and running. Especially if we want to do the hardest three in the game. For Greece, I think. And that's forming Byzantium. Uh, dockyards, well, we'll just start building convoys. We don't have to steal for it. I'm not going to trade away another civilian factory for steel, so it has to deal with it. 
Uh, now let's go to our focus tree. This is the new focus tree of Greece, and you can see how big it is. Um, this tree over here is um, army-wise, army, army focuses, bonuses to land doctrines and that kind of things. Over here, uh, the Air Force doctrines and here the Navy. We are not going to focus on anything of this at the beginning. Because it is way too much... Uh, yeah. I uh, think we need to do other things first. That's just uh, what we need to do. Uh, this is the economy focus. And there are some bugs in the in this build. Maybe that will be fixed before they release it. Because in my test run I went this way. So I think we're going to go this way in uh, this run. Um, because you can get military factories and civilian factories for people that have an opinion greater than 80. But I did not get anything. So I did not get any military factory. So I think we're going to go this way. So, and hopefully that one works actually how it is supposed to work. Because it's going to be... Hopefully it's going to work this uh, this branch. I don't know. And this is the political tree. And you have to choose between two at the start. Uh, the king's government. Or you're going to go bring home the exiled republicans. Now... We are gonna having we are gonna have an election, and that is a decision at the start of the game, the 1936 election. Uh, we could place the king under house arrest, and if we do this, then this guy will lose, and the democratic uh, faction of uh, Phila Lefteron. I hope I pronounced it right. I'm I think Reese just pronounced what you see, so it is Phila Lefteron, I guess. And yeah, then he will become in power. So we can choose now. And since we want to form a Byzantium, we have to go this way. Otherwise, we cannot do it. Uh, this is the communist way. This is some more uh, constitutional and fascist way. So yeah, that is the four uh, trees you can do. So a bit more democratic slash fascist tree. It's both, actually. Then communist... Constitutional, uh, monarchy, and fascist only. And then this combines over here with a bit of the uh, industrial path over here. And that is, this is the army force, uh, navy, air, and land units. So, But we cannot do this one right now because we need to have the king placed under house arrest. So we need to do this, otherwise we cannot complete this focus. And we really want this way, because we want to go somewhere over here, you know. Unlock's decision, revive Byzantium. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I think we're going to do that. So we can choose about uh, two now. We can do a army one. We can do the drachma one and get political power. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to devaluate the drachma. We get uh, 120 political power. And we can manage our debt to the uh, nations that we have debt with. And that will hopefully... Uh, be done very quickly because it is a very bad modifier managing the death so we will start with this one uh, you can see that over here the death to the IFC we have an, an 15 percent extra consumer good factories and less stability we have the foreign monopolies uh, which gives us another 20 percent extra consumer goods factories which is very bad we do have trade deal opinions higher but look at the trade laws and economy laws cost so we are not going to change those laws um, at the start of the game. Because it's super expensive. Now the Schacht plan is uh, actually good for our consumer goods factories. But uh, we have more resources to the market. And we don't really want that much to the market. We want to, have, want to keep some for ourselves. The civilian factory construction speed is very high though. So maybe we should just focus on... Building more of this, since it is quicker. Yeah, I think I'm going to get uh, some civilian factories first then. It could delay our uh, our start, but it can also boost our start, because I don't think we're going to be at war for the first two years. So, Okay, there we go. That's the Schacht plan. We can also get rid of this one later. Political instability, we get less political power, and that is because of these factions that we have to deal with. The Republicans, the Communists, uh, the Fascists. 
And we are an agrarian society. We have minus 45% recruitable population and our factory output is minus 30%. We need to deal with this. With this one, with this one, mm, some at some point with this one. We need to deal with this one and we need to deal with this one. And what is this? We are now George II. George II is the unpopular king of the Hellenes. I hope, it, I, I hope it's pronounced Hellenes or Hellenes, I don't know. Having been restored to the throne from exile in 1935, thanks to Rick's uh, plebiscite, he is determined to keep his throne this time. Oh really? Well, maybe not. So he will just evaluate the drachma and we are gonna put the king in under house arrest. So we will stop King George II from interfering in Greece's democratic processes. Then the more popular the Venezalists will surely win the election. And the Venezalists are I think the Democrats. I'm I don't I'm not sure. But we will click this, we will place him under house arrest, we get less stability. That's really it's really low already, so it doesn't matter. And then we should win the election with the guy that we need to go to our path. So at the start of the game. Uh, you have the political actions here. We're not going to use those propaganda efforts, no. And here is the uh, faction management. So there are four factions in Greece. The monarchists, who are of course loyal now because the King George is uh, in power. Uh, the republicans are hostile and they give minus 15% stability. The communists are hostile, also minus 15% stability. But it's another 30% extra. So we get less uh, political power, our factories are bad and our dockyards are bad, it's just very bad. But the fascists are inconsequential because I don't think they are in the country yet. But they will come. Um, and we need them. Uh, so yeah, we need to manage these factions. You can befriend the Republicans for example. They are now hostile and if you want to befriend them it costs 250. But uh, you need to be fascist or non-aligned I think. No, you need to be fascist to be do to do this. But we cannot do anything. We cannot befriend them. Uh, but later in the uh, tree, the focus tree, you can also befriend them, and it will change all the way around because our our government is going to change a couple of times in the course of the uh, build up time. So it's going to be uh, something we are not going to click on. We are not going to befriend or crush any faction. It will go automatically. Now. When this focus is over, we can manage the death, and those death uh, management will also pop up here in the event and decisions tab here. I think uh, below the faction management, and then we have to spend political power to get rid of it. So I think that we can start playing the game. We have low manpower, we have insufficient resources, yeah, we cannot do anything about it. I think it is time to unpause the game. Now we do have a fleet. We have six submarines, we have one heavy cruiser, one light cruiser and eight destroyers. And we can somewhat stop the, the, the Turkish at some point, hopefully later in the game, with that fleet. But that's going to be uh, very close, I think. Airplane wise, we do have planes. We have 26 fighters and we have 71 tactical bombers at the start of the game. So we do have a little bit. Uh, yeah. So our armies are just uh, sitting on important provinces all around the map. That's what I told them to do. Actually, I told my field marshal to do that, I think. Yeah. And that's fine. Uh, we have a debt of 70 artillery. We, we need 6.1 thousand infantry equipment. And we need uh, 200 support equipment. Just to uh, reinforce our army. So that's, uh, that's going to be a hard uh, thing to do. And yeah, the build-up time is just really long, I think. Uh, can I see the new achievements in the meantime? There are new achievements in this, uh, this patch. Yeah, we can restore Byzantium and have Italy, Romania and Russia as subjects. I think that's going to be uh, the bad Romans achievement that we want. Romania, Italy, and Russia as subjects. Okay. 
I would love to take it actually myself, but I guess we have to make them subjects. As Greece or Bulgaria own both sides of the Bosporus, as Turkey subjugate both Greece and Bulgaria. Okay, that's gonna be hopefully a bit easier. It depends what uh, Turkey is gonna do. Maybe they're gonna join the common turn and then we have a problem. Um, as Greece from Byzantine Empire, we are gonna do that one. As Greece capture Istanbul and rename it to Constantinople. Now, of course I will. So, we have a lot of uh, things we can do over here. I will of course not start an intelligence agency. Because uh, we don't have time for this. We cannot spend five civilian factories to create an intelligence agency. And there we go. The Venezelists. Venezelists? The, yeah, I, I don't know. Win the election. The Greek people filled the streets of Greece today, celebrating the choice of the army to ensure the monarchists could not interfere with the election results. The Venezelists, so it's also spelled different here and here have been delivered a powerful mandate to govern, returning from their exile abroad. But they face an uphill battle, uniting a very divided country. And a country that has not forgotten this disastrous war the Venezuelans pulled the whole country into in 1919. I think it was with, with the Turkish, I guess. There are remains... There also remains the question of what the Venezuelans will do with the captured Greek monarch. Regardless of what happens, interesting times lay ahead for Greece. There we go. The monarchist and communist become indifferent. We become the Fila Lefteron. And we have a new guy. And we are now playing as Elefterios Venizelos. Oh, that is why they are called Venezelists. They are supporting this man. And he is really good. As you can see. We get a bit more political power, we get a bit more stability, there is a bit more war support, and the political advisor cost is minus 25%. We need to use that. The problem is he can die at any moment. And I hope he will stay alive for a very long time. So, we have to wait for the devaluating the drachma. Takes five more days. And then we will pick the first option uh, to go our political way, I guess. Or we just start building our economy, which we really need to do. But we will see. Uh, Oil-wise, we don't have any uh, refineries or whatever. So, But it will go up slowly. There we go. We devaluated the drachma. 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 And now we can just, of course, go uh, this way. I'm not going to go this way. That didn't work for me, so I'm going to go this way. We can replace our agrarian society with industrializing society. Oh my god, factory output plus 35%. Oof, what a... That's a huge difference, isn't it? My goodness. How long can we wait with this? Uh, we get... Oh, we need political power. We need political power because we can get our advisors very cheap right now. So I'm going to go with the bring home the exiled Republicans. I mean, the king is uh, not in charge anymore, so they can come home. We get uh, political power. We get a bit of change of popularity in democracy and a bit of popularity in communism. And then we can get some or other ministers and generals that will return from exile. Some people are not going to like it though, but oh well. Let's do this one. And we will modify our government. Uh, at the beginning, it's very simple. You want more political power. Now there are only two I can pick at the beginning. We have one that gives political power plus five, stability and daily democracy support. Now that can be good because the, the democracy support is going to help with the uh, stability. I think. Yeah, the ruling uh, party popularity will go up, because it's uh, not not at 50% yet. Or this is not updated, that can also be true. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to get this one. For now. And since we completed the uh, devaluating the drachma, I'm going to call it the drachma now. Uh, we can manage our debt, so uh, we need to do four clicks. 
And then we can repay a small uh, debt repayment to the British, the French and the Italians. And when we complete this, then this modifier will go away. The debt to the IFC. Which is something we want, to, we want to get rid of as quickly as we can. There's another bonus. When you spend the 25, um, we get a national spirit, small debt repayments. And... Oh, that's actually a bad thing, I think. Our consumer goods factories go up even more, I think. With 5%. Let's check this, actually. At the moment, it's 59%. Yeah, 64%. So <laughs> it's gonna be... It's gonna be even worse, I guess. Now, luckily for us, we are getting five civilian factories from exports. Now, let's have a look at our trade. Uh, we have a bit of chromium. 17, 18, and 13. We also have aluminium. We have a bit of steel, and we have a bit of tungsten. We have actually almost all the resources. We just don't have oil and rubber, but we can make that in our country. So, yeah. It's not too bad, actually. Of course, when you play as uh, Turkey, you have all the chromium in the world. But uh, we have uh, we have aluminium. Turkey does not have aluminium. At no tungsten. So, our starting situation can be improved very quickly. Especially with uh, some more of our industrial path here. Uh, we can get a, uh, a synthetic refinery for free. And the next one here, we can get more aluminium, 40 or something. We can get uh, 24 more steel and 5 more tungsten. So it's uh, it's interesting to play as Greece. That's uh, one thing I'm sure about. And uh, yeah, we can just uh, keep playing the game now because we need to wait. And that's the, the main thing, right? At the start of the, EU, uh, the Hearts of Iron 4 games, you need to wait a long time. Actually, we can go to speed 5. Let's take a look at what, uh, what uh, Turkey is doing. They are doing the Montreux conversion. Con convection. Oh, they are going to re remilitarize the Bosporus Strait. They cannot go there right now. So, that's bad. And there we go. Eleftherios Venizelos passed away. And that was pretty quickly. Uh, he, he passed away peacefully in his home. And yeah, if you want to read this. Especially when you're a Greek. Maybe it's uh, nice to read, right? But he's dead. So we don't have our mo modifiers anymore. Please owes you a debt it will never be able to repay. We now get Themistocles Sophulis. That is this guy. And of course he's not as good as our previous one. Now we lost our... Um, modifiers to a protocol device, so luckily we could take one of it with a, modif with a small modifier. But yeah, that was a pity. He died very quickly. It'll take a long time to get every everything uh, fully supplied here. This decision will clear one quarter of a current death with the United Kingdom each time it is completed, so. And there we go, there are some events in the world. Turkey remilitarizes the Turkish Strait. The Bosporus. I think it's called the Bosporus. I always thought that was here. I don't know why. Uh, and the remilitarization of the Rhineland happening. In my test run, Germany became, uh, got a civil war and became an ally. Because they became democratic. So I don't know what's going to happen in this game. We could fail very hard. It's absolutely possible. Okay, we have a decision available. Uh, what is it? Ease up conscription. Demobilization. With the threat of war seeming distant, people are no longer willing to accept the hardships of wartime loss. 
need to review our laws and consider changing them to quiet the protesters before the situation escalates. So we will go to volunteer only. If I click this button, if I don't do it. Then we lose base stability and the communists get more power. I think it is important to get our uh, our party of the uh, Democrats uh, in power more and more because that will raise our stability as well. And good stability is very handy for uh, more output and more political power. So I think I have to click it. But I have 85 days left, so let's wait a bit longer. Okay, we got our first technology. It's all standard, right? You, I don't have to explain you guys what I'm doing here. Especially not when uh, when you are a veteran. I'm not a veteran of Hearts of Iron 4. I'm, I, I didn't play this game for maybe half a year or something. Since the last uh, patch of the uh, La Resistance. Yeah. So... But I still know a little bit of the game, and I think I know most of the gameplay, how I, sh how I should play it, so it should be no problem. Yeah, low manpower of course. What are we having for now? We now have uh, limited conscription, so they want to go back to this. But maybe I have to do it. And it's nice to hear the uh, allies radio for once. I think this is this is the allies radio. Normally you never hear it because you almost never never play as the uh, as the democrats as the as the allies. So <laughs> that's nice. So we can choose. We can choose, guys. I can still go the communist way. Make the monarchist hostile and the communist friendly. To the Stalinist line, dominate the Bulgarians, ally Tito, secure the Aegean from from, uh, from Turkey, attack the fascists. No, did she? You were going to make Byzantium. So we have to go this way. Now I can of course wait with this option and go back to my industry. Let's see what this does. It takes 35 days. Uh, we get another plus 10 stability. And George II, our previous king that was leading the country, relinquishes his stranglehold on the country and becomes a constitutional monarch. Ah, so he is actually, okay, I lost. And I want my people to be friendly now. We are going to build up this country. And the monarchists will become friendly. And the communists become very hostile. But it only takes 35 days. Let's do it. Stability is nice at the start of the game. We have a lot of po po uh, political power now. Uh, we need to click this button, I think. If you don't click this uh, demobilization event, it go over and over. So uh, I think it, it triggers once every three months or something. And that can really make the communists uh, too strong. Uh, so I think we have to click this uh, button anytime soon. But I will wait a bit longer, I guess. Well, does it matter? I don't know if this will repeat if I click this button because I did not click this button in my test run and it lowered my stability too much so I, I really want to uh, do this this option and get rid of the communists. Now we also need more political power. But I can only take this guy. Some political advice become available when the monarchists become friendly. And they will become friendly after this, this option, right? So what, do, what can we get when the monarchists are friendly? Now this one is really good. 10% political power and 5% factory output. Uh, you give manpower, we don't need it right now. We can get this one. Military factory speed. Improved relation maintain costs can be very good for... Uh, our industry uh, tree, if it actually works, the left side of the industry tree has uh, something you can use for the improved relations maintain cost, and also on the right side. So maybe we'll pick this one as well later. And we cannot do you, we could do you, but you're only 5% and you have 10% and factory output. And these are communists. 
and you are a fascist. So I think I'm gonna wait and pick, uh, and pick Iona, Ioannis Metaxas. Wait, Metaxas, that's... Uh, Metaxism, he's a fascist. But he's apparently a monarchist fascist. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it sounds funny, right? All right, guys, I'm going to end the first episode. The next one should be up very soon. I think I'm going to upload two or three videos uh, today. Uh, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to check the links in the description. Join the Discord. Join the discussion. And um, yeah, as long as you like the video and watch them, you are supporting me. If you want to support me a bit more, go to my Patreon page. It is in the description of the video and also in my YouTube banner. And for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in part two. Bye bye.